Hello everyone. Welcome to another video. I just want to thank you to all of you for helping me hit 8k subscribers. I honestly didn't expect to hit it so fast and I couldn't have done it without you. Today, I'll be giving you 10 tips and tricks that will certainly help you become better at MM2. Make sure to watch till the end. Not everybody expects to play professionally well, and that's completely okay. Sometimes you don't have the energy or the enthusiasm. That's why warming up regularly playing MM2 aim training games can give you an advantage before playing the real MM2. A game I recommend is the MM2 aim trainer by NotBlue. It has a variety of different maps and challenges to choose from, including campers, spam jumpers, and exploiters. But try start with easier challenges, then increase the difficulty over time. Other games like Murderers vs. Sheriffs or the Duels and 5v5 MM2 games. You'll be amazed at how much your aiming skills improve in MM2. Do you want cheap murder mystery 2 godlies? Then check out BloxCard.com. BloxCard is a Roblox shop which sells cheap murder mystery 2 godlies. Oh my god! I use BloxCard myself to get my murder mystery 2 godlies, and I have never been scammed with them before. They have an automated delivery system, which delivers your items within a matter of minutes from when you have purchased your order. Simply click on an item which you want to purchase and go to the cart, and click on Proceed Payment. Use my coupon code SOLEM for 10% discount on your order at checkout. Now let's claim our order, just follow the instructions provided. Just joined the bot, and now it has traded me my items. Make sure to check out Bloxcart using the link in description, and use code SOLEM for 10% discount. If you're the sheriff or an innocent, it's best to stay away from large groups and remain cautious of the people around you. Don't trust anyone until you identify the murderer. Try position yourself in isolated areas or behind walls where you can observe other players. Make sure to keep an eye on your surroundings by frequently looking behind you for any potential targeters. Stay alert until the murderer reveals themselves by making a kill. The sheriff is the only player that could save the day, so staying close to them increases your chances of survival. However, you don't want to block the sheriff's way, make space for the sheriff, otherwise you might get accidentally shot and blamed. If the sheriff gets eliminated, being nearby lets you grab the gun quickly, giving you a chance to win the round. Just keep an eye on the game and be aware. I've been seeing many beginner and intermediate players not throwing their knife when they're murderer, so I'm gonna show a quick tutorial for those people. The throwing mechanic works on both mobile and PC. In mobile, you must equip your knife and tap the throw button. A green hitbox will appear when you aim at someone, use that to throw. On PC, you can throw by pressing the E key or right-clicking. Then, use your mouse to aim and throw in the desired direction. Practicing this mechanic can really improve your murderer skills. When you're sheriff, always keep your gun hidden until you're confident of the murderer's identity. If you reveal your gun too fast, it will make you their first target. Make sure to always look for anyone acting suspicious until you know who the murderer is. And if you're murderer, don't pull out your knife immediately until you're close to the nearest target. Pulling out your knife early makes it obvious you're murderer and get instantly shot by the sheriff in no time. If you're sheriff or an innocent and you see a knife being thrown to a wall or around you, but don't actually see the murderer, you can pay attention to what kind of knife it is. Each player usually has a different weapon, so when you see someone with that same knife later on, you'll know that's the murderer. Another pro tip that I know is helpful for everybody is to pay attention to the effects used on dead bodies. Some knives have effects such as flaming, radioactive, elite, etc., and each of these effects have their uniqueness that could be easily identified as an innocent or sheriff. 
For example, if a dead body is on fire, it indicates that the murderer used a fire effect, making it more recognizable and start to suspect the person with that specific effect. It's also easier to identify the murderer using colored fire effects because each flame has their own color hues. Always keep an eye on players who might have that effect equipped. Using perks are really important for Murderer because it gives you an advantage that can change the flow of your game. For example, Haste gives you 10% boost and X-Ray allows you to see through walls to track remaining players and maps. Most of these perks can be bought with coins, no Robux or diamonds needed. Some of these perks can be particularly useful on specific maps. For example, the Sprint perk can help players navigate through large maps quickly, X-rays can help spot other players in large maps where there are many hiding spots that players may use. The haste perk can be useful in smaller maps such as House 2 and Mansion 2. Understanding the layout of the maps helps you to know where to hide or where to find players. The more you play MM2, the more you are familiar with the layouts. I suggest you should take time during the rounds and explore the different maps looking for hiding spots like secret rooms and efficient routes. You could also spectate other players to see where the players are hiding, so it could give you more knowledge of the maps. Using Shift Lock centers your arrow cursor in the middle of the screen that basically gives us a better perspective. It helps us seeing through walls and peek around corners safely without exposing your whole entire body. This is useful for spotting wall campers and observing at areas that can't be spotted without shift lock. I sometimes use shift lock to fit into tight spaces that could be useful for shortcuts like between the boxes and factory too. Very useful since it stabilizes your screen and fixes your camera angle. People like me tend to panic and be nervous during the round, but the key is to stay calm, relax, and stay focused. It helps you to think clearly and lock in during high pressure moments in the game. You'll be able to concentrate better on your surroundings and the actions of other players. Having stress can lead to several mistakes that lead to only make things worse. Remember, you are playing MM2 to enjoy. Keeping your cool will definitely improve your gameplay. To beat a camper in MM2, here is a simple tip that I use. Try wait for the murderer to throw their knife, then quickly run for the gun, then move away from the camper as fast as possible to avoid getting stabbed immediately. That's because when the murderer throws the knife, the throw has a short cooldown, giving you a chance to make your move and beat the camper. The main way to beat a camper is to be sneaky. When the camper is focused on guarding the gun, try sneaking them from behind like nearby walls and around corners. Campers are usually in first person and might not notice you from behind, giving you a chance to quickly grab the gun and win the game. Try to be unpredictable with your movements. Timing is key when beating a camper. Try to come out of nowhere when and where the camper least expected. Just quickly rush in and juke the murderer, grab the gun, and immediately shoot the murderer, catching them by surprise. Lastly, beating a camper also requires patience. Try wait for the camper to move away from the gun in a far distance, and as soon as they're distracted or chasing someone else, quickly grab the gun and take your shot. And that's all the tips. Thank you for watching.